Today is Friday, February 11, 2022. Welcome to Kimberly Elementary School's news show. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the to the flag of the United States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The weather for today will be a high of 68 degrees with the low of 44 degrees. Good morning, Kimberly Elementary. This is Lauren Boyle with a few words of wisdom. The word courtesy means polite and respectful. When we are courteous, we behave in a way that shows good manners and respect. We try not to be helpful to others. There's, there's an old saying, the greater the person, the greater the courtesy. So what does, have, what does having to be courteous to do with being a great human? Being great people understand that when you hurt others, you hurt yourself. They know that when you are respectful to others, they are more likely to show respect. And that's the great thing. I believe to everyone has the, a polite potential to be great. Today, show off your greatness. Be courteous to others with something to think about. This is one boy making a great day and not the choice is yours. Good morning, my loves. It's Mrs. Reed, your loving school counselor. And today is Wednesday, and we're moving on to the third day of National School Counseling Week. That's my job as your school counselor. I'm here every day to make sure you're happy and loved. Well, I need to explain some other things that I do. If you're ready, Come a little closer and listen up so I can explain just what I love to do. All right, let's get started, my loves. That's right, we're still in National School Counselor Appreciation Week. All right, and of course, you know I love my hugs and I love my love. Well, now it's my time to explain to you some other things that I do just for you. I love this point. Listen up. I am your school counselor. I don't have a magic wand. 
a crystal ball or all of the answers. But I do have ears to listen, a heart to care, and time to give. I have ideas and an open mind. I am your school counselor and I am here for you. I am feeling great about being your school counselor. And you know what else? I wanna tell you one more thing. I love each and every one of you. And I'm gonna show that love every day. So what else do I do? All right, I work each day trying to make a difference. And I have this poster, thanks to Ms. Williams, and it's the seven up of school counseling. School counseling helps students, one, rise up to new challenges, two, grow up into responsible and compassionate citizens, three, soak up new learning, four, move up and transition to new adventures. For you, that means move on to middle school. Five, chin up with confidence. Six, shape up your behavior. And seven, build up your self-esteem. So school counseling helps students realize their potential. So every day I'm gonna try hard to do the seven ups. I'm gonna help you rise up, grow up, soak up, move up, chin up, shape up, and build up. Yes, that's part of my job. Well, my loves, as you know, I'm always advocating and loving you always. And I'll come back again. So until next time, my loves, this is Mrs. Reed, your loving school counselor. I'll see you later. Bye. A man known for hitting the stage with some amazing dance moves and a voice that got him the nickname, the Godfather of Soul. Stay tuned for more as we share interesting facts from the biography of James Brown. James Brown is known as an amazing singer, songwriter, band leader, and was born on May 3rd, 1933 in Barnwell, South Carolina. Looking back at his early life, James Brown came up during a time in history where there were many people who were struggling during the Great Depression. That is where at an early age, he began to dance for soldiers at Fort Gordon and also pick cotton, wash cars, and shine shoes to earn extra money. An interesting fact about James Brown's education was he was dismissed from school at the age of 12 for not having proper clothing to attend. That is where James Brown would go on to work odd jobs and would eventually turn to music as an escape, singing in his local church choir and developing his unique voice. Now with this next fact, it is all about turning tragedy into potential. At the age of 16, James Brown got into trouble and was arrested for stealing cars, where he was sentenced to a three-year prison term. The crazy thing about it is, while James was in prison, he ended up leading the prison gospel choir and meeting Bobby Bird, an aspiring R&B singer who they would later form a great musical connection. Now, of course, when you think of James Brown, most people think music, but James Brown was also a talented athlete. For example, after his release from prison in 1953, James Brown spent the next two years focusing on sports where he primarily boxed and also played semi-pro baseball. Now, a crazy thing about music artists is a lot of artists get their start in church. And that same thing went for James Brown. For example, in 1955, Brown would connect with Bobby Bird from prison and join his gospel music group, which would later turn into the famous Falcons and begin performing in nightclubs, sharing their skills. From there, the Flames would hit the road touring, singing their famous song, Please, Please, Please 
which reached number six on the R&B charts at that time. The crazy thing about the group, though, was that beyond that song, Please, 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 they had nothing else to share. In order to not lose his record deal, though, James Brown moved to New York, working with other musicians to create music that would end up creating hit songs like Try Me, Lost Someone, Night Train, and Prisoner of Love. Now, when it came to James Brown's worth ethic, he was no stranger to working hard. For example, it was known throughout the music industry that James Brown would perform five or six nights a week, earning him the nickname, the hardest working man in show business. Another interesting fact about the life of James Brown is on April 5th, 1968, that was the date after the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. and James Brown would help out. That is where he performed in a rare televised concert in Boston, attempting to prevent riots there. His efforts actually worked and many young Bostonians stayed home to watch the concert. Although Brown experienced financial troubles in the 70s, he would make a turnaround in the 80s with hit songs like Living in America featured on Rocky IV, and he also made an appearance in the film The Blues Brothers. Now for his contributions to music history, he was also inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1986. Now, we did mention that Brown had challenges during his life, and one of his biggest challenges was in 1988, dealing with substance abuse. That is where he came to an insurance seminar carrying a firearm after using drugs. He would eventually lead police on a high-speed chase for an hour and a half, going from Augusta, Georgia, into South Carolina, before being arrested and serving 15 months in jail. Now, even though James Brown had many ups and downs during his lifetime, he is still considered the godfather of soul, influencing artists like Michael Jackson, Mick Jagger, Africa Bambata, and even Jay-Z. Sadly, James Brown passed away at the age of 73 on December 25th in 2006, where he had a week-long battle with pneumonia. So I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me as I shared fun facts from the biography of James Brown. His place in history and influence on music and black history will forever be remembered.